All right, so this is the second recording for lesson 1.14. This one's going to be focused on just kind of some ways of dealing with numbers in chemistry. Um, we're going to talk scientific notation and significant figures. So you might already be familiar with some of this stuff from, say, a math class or something. But first thing, ah, I'm so sad that my exponents are not working. This should be 1.3 times 10 to the 8th. So that's a superscript 8, right? But we use scientific notation to write out numbers that are really, really, really long and oftentimes have a bunch of zeros. And I mean, if you had to sit there and write this number down like five or six different times in order to answer a lab report or something like that, that would be really annoying. And the odds of you forgetting one of the zeros would be pretty high. So we're going to rewrite those as scientific notation. So in this format, all right, so scientific notation is always going to be, you know, a decimal, like 2.5, 6.7 times 10 to the sum power. All right. So the first thing you got to do is you're going to take your decimal and you're going to move it so that it is right after your, so that the only thing that's left of it is a single non-zero digit. All right. So for example, this 6022 and then a whole bunch of zeros, we're going to move the decimal right here. And what we got to do is we got to count how many times it's going to take us to move our decimal that started here to that ending spot. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen times. So and I'm gonna rewrite this, dropping all the zeros after those twos. So like you, you keep any of your non-zero digits. So it'll be 6.022. And then it's going to be times 10. And the exponent is going to be 19. The only kind of rule to that is if you were moving your decimal to the left like we were, it's going to be a positive 19. If you move your decimal to the right, and your, you know, your number was less than 1, then it's a negative number. So like this next one would have a negative number. So we're going to move the decimal here so that it's 3.14, just one non-zero in front of the decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this would be 3.14 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay. So, you give it a shot, see if you can turn these numbers into scientific notation. I'll do a few examples, one from each side, just to give you some practice. Um, but really, it's, it's pretty simple. Pause the video if you need to. But let's see, I'm going to do the second one here. So I need to move my decimal so that it's 7.86. So it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 decimal moves. And then because I moved my decimal to the right, it is 7 times 10 to the negative 7th, if I can get it to write the 7. All right, and I'm also going to do this one. So my decimal is starting on the outside. I want to make it so that it's 5.26. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5.26 times 10 to the positive 5 because I was moving my decimal to the left. So that's scientific notation. Another kind of number thing is when we... Do calculations. 
right? There, there's precision to our measurements. But sometimes when we throw things into the calculator, suddenly we get a whole bunch of decimals in our answers. So you get around to an appropriate number of sig figs, which is usually going to be two or three. Um, but on the quiz, the 1.15 quiz, there's going to be a problem where you have to identify something based on how many sig figs it has. So I just wanted to give you sig fig rules. So sig figs is just shortened for significant figures. So non-zeros are always considered significant figures, right? Zeros, on the other hand, it depends. If they're placeholders, then they're important. If they're just kind of there, it, like there's rules to when it matters. So zeros that are sandwiched between two non-zeros, like 202, 1001, the zeros in the middle, those are considered significant. Right? Because if you were to remove those zeros, it changes the value of the number. Zeros to the left of the first non-zero are not significant. right? Because you could rewrite these numbers in scientific notation to get rid of those zeros and it would still mean the same thing. Alright, so all of these examples here have one sig fig. All right, just the non-zero number, because zeros to the left don't count. They're just there to, well, the zero two is there for no good reason at all, but the other ones are there because we're not writing in scientific notation. The zeros to the right, these are dependent on the number. All right, if there is a decimal present, then those zeros are considered significant because you include the decimal for a reason, all right? Because this number here, 100, all right? I could write this like this, or one times 10 to the second, but when I include this decimal, all right? Even if I were to write this in scientific notation, I'd have to write it as 1.00 times 10 to the second. Right, so when that decimal gets included, included, like, you know, something that you don't feel like you'd naturally do, then the decimal is in there to communicate that those zeros are significant. Same thing with decimal here. You could just leave off that last zero. So you're including it because it's important. All right, but these other ones where we don't throw the decimal in there, the only reason we have the zero, the two zeros in a hundred is because we're not writing it in scientific notation. And then the 2002, it's just that last zero that's not significant because the two in between the twos fit into this first rule. So jot down your sig sig rules and let's practice this a little bit. So I want you to pause the video, see if you can determine how many sig figs each of these have, and then we'll. Set up or I'll, we'll go over how many they actually do have. All right, so first one, 0 0.0501. I know five and one are significant because they're non-zeros. The first two zeros are zeros to the left. Those never count. The middle zero is sandwiched in between, so that does count. So there's three sig figs here, five, zero, and one. For the next one, two million, 2045. I think that's what that number is. <laughs> so I've got four non-zeros that count and all the zeros that are present in this number are sandwiched in between non-zero numbers. So actually every single digit in here is significant. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sig figs in that number. Now, just so you know, this was supposed to be scientific notation, as is this one. So when it comes to scientific notation, pay attention to what's in the beginning. And if the person doing their scientific notation correctly, all of those will be significant numbers. So there's three sig figs in scientific notation. When you write in scientific notation, all you do is keep the significant figures. 
Alright, so the next one, 100. So the 1 definitely counts. The zeros falling to the right are significant only if a decimal is present, and there's no decimal present. So there's only one sig pig here. Scientific notation, everything should be significant, 5.2. So there's two sig figs there. And last one. So we've got zeros to the right, which are only significant if the decimal is present. There is a decimal present. So I'm going to include those, and there's a total of five in the last one. And that's numbers and the end of the recordings for this assignment.